Don't play games with God because he doesn't play games with you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 is one of the most misinterpreted verses in the Bible. Some have distorted the passage to make it a logistical scripture, leading some individuals to believe mistakenly that a person may work for their salvation. However, certain sectors of Christianity have used this scripture to instill fear in the hearts of people, implying that a person must work for their salvation, or strive to keep their salvation, because if you don't, you will lose your salvation and will burn for all eternity in hell. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. With despair and trembling, work out your own salvation. All this verse is stating is that after you've been saved by grace, you should get serious about your salvation. Work it out. Salvation is not something to take lightly. Salvation is a never-ending issue. It is something that literally saves hell-bound people and shifts the trajectory of their everlasting life from hell to heaven. Paul is not urging them to work for their salvation in this passage. You can't earn it. He is asking people to take their salvation seriously and for it to be obvious. With fear and trembling, work out your own salvation. Live a life that is a testimony of your salvation. When you are born again, God has done tremendous things in your life. God has placed his Holy Spirit in your life. He has placed his kingdom inside of you. Now, work it out. What God has placed inside you, work it out, so that it may show. Your salvation is on the inside, make sure it shows on the outside. You have a spirit that is now alive to God, alive to the things of God. The spirit, that is alive in you, now allow it to work out into every area of your life. This is the Christian faith, brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. With dread and trembling, work out your own salvation. Live a life that values your salvation. With dread and trembling, work out your own salvation. Do not fall in love with sin. Don't let your flesh rule over you. With dread and trembling, work out your own salvation. Repentance and the pursuit of righteousness but what exactly does fear and trembling mean? Simply said, it implies to take things seriously. God has given you the free gift of salvation, cherish it, love it, and let the free gift of salvation that has been put in you to spread throughout your life. Every good and perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, according to James chapter 1 verse 17. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his scriptures. The Apostle James described God in a very accurate way. He is the Father of lights, and there is no variation or shadow of turning in him. This suggests that there is no deception in God, since the Apostle went on to explain that God begat us with the word of truth. Every point of God is true. God does not lie, nor does he play tricks on mankind. Albert Einstein once observed, God does not play dice, and I wholeheartedly agree. Our God is a man of high integrity. When he says, he will undoubtedly bring it to pass. That is why the Bible says, the word of God will not return to him unless it has accomplished the purpose for which it was sent. The word of God is yet yeah and amen. 
God will not say yes when he means no, and he wants us to relate with him in the same manner. God doesn't play games with anyone, so no one should play games with him. God told Eli that he will honor those, who honor him and will despise those who despise him. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 30, if you honor God he will honor you in return, but if you try to play games with him, be set for the worse. James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. This demonstrates unequivocally that God does not play games with anyone. God cannot be tempted by evil, and he will not tempt anybody else with evil. He interacts with us with complete honesty and integrity, and he does not expect anything less from us as his children. Many churchgoers are misusing God's intellect and have not completely surrendered to him. They are simultaneously serving both God and the devil. Meanwhile, according to the Bible, we cannot serve two masters. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? You are either a God's child or a devil's child. It is not feasible to make a claim to be a father. Here, God is asking a question. Where is our fear and honor for him if a father deserves respect from his son and a master deserves honor from his servant? If we respect our bosses at work, God deserves much greater respect from us. God will not share his glory with gods created by us. God wants us to recognize that he is God, just as he did in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. We must ensure to acknowledge and glorify God at all times, without giving his praise to another. God wants us to live with the consciousness that he is the sovereign Lord. Whatever takes the place of God in your heart has become your idol. It could be your job or your wealth. God wants us to give him priority. He wants us to seek him first. More so, God wants us to live for him alone. He wants our life, marriage, finances, ministry, business and academics to be dedicated to him. No one who has ever walked faithfully with God has ever regretted it. When we live our life for Christ, we will do whatever he asks of us. We must not allow anything to stand in the way of our relationship with Christ. We change our lives for everlasting life when we dedicate our lives to Christ when we decide to leave the part of darkness to come to the portion of light. We accept Christ's life in us and offer it to him. The life we are living today is for Christ, not for ourselves. If you are living for Christ, you will not have any hatred. If you are living for Christ, you will not be bitter. If you have the life of Christ in you, and you are living for Christ, you will have the power of God in you because the life of Christ is filled with the power of God. You need to know that, you as a Christian must have the life of Christ in you, and you must live for him. When the Holy Spirit comes, the power come with him. This is when the fruits of the Holy Spirit start manifesting in one's life. The identity of true Christians the Holy Spirit will start to make you hate what God hates, and love what God loves. What are the things God hates? The Bible gave us all of these. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 through 19. There are six things that the Lord hates, 
seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feel that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. And there are things that God loves. When you are filled with the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit begin to take shape in your life. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. If these are the attributes found in you as a Christian, it means you have the Holy Spirit in you, and that shows that you are living for Christ. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will have the power of God and nothing can by any means hurt you. That is what Jesus has said. The Holy Spirit and you will start working in you and will be conferring you to the image of God through.